So Unreal Engine 5.1 is out, at least the preview version. You can download it right now and try all these features. I'm quite excited for this one because this one has a lot of improvement for the foliage assets that we lacked before. If you wanted to put a tree before in Unreal and it didn't have Nanite, it's going to be very heavy on performance. So now we don't have this issue. So basically we have the Lumen improvements um, basically better um better performance and improved support for foliage you got the nanite improvement you can see here that it has you know support for two-sided foliage pixel depth offset word position offset these are the things that we were looking for for several months ago and now we have them so it's it's quite nice to have them but trading i'm not really into at tracing because I'm mostly working games, but if you're into movies, then uh, this one will be quite important to you. GPU light mass, that's quite important, especially for games. We don't always need to have dynamic lining. If we bake the maps, uh, everything will be super smooth. And, you know, basically, especially for mobile games and this kind of things, having dynamic lining can be a little bit heavy. So more improvements on GPU light mass. This one is quite good. Um, if you open a new project, maybe you need to wait like several minutes or sometimes hours for all the shaders to compile. With this, basically, you only need to compile the shaders that are on demand. And of course, it's much faster. Okay. Uh, this one, I have no idea what it is. This one looks quite interesting. The strata materials is, looks like different shading models, like some kind of presets uh, to have like higher quality materials. Um, still quite new. I want to try it later. And um, it looks quite similar to what CryEngine had before with a lot of presets for materials and this kind of things. That's, that's nice to have. Niagara, basically some just UI uh, ribbons are now GPU. Just one little update, I, I believe. Um, for world building, we have data layer assets. Now they are basically, uh, they're taken as a file. So you can share data layer assets between teams easier. And also they have the game feature plugins that you can put the plugin to work on some areas of the map and this kind of thing that's quite good hierarchical lod's improvement um basically just some updates for when, when you want to render things that are at like distance like this you might want to add hierarchical lod's okay uh, so use your performance for this large work coordinates um basically war partition stuff Actor editor context looks like the actor will have the data layer, which is in, and which folder there is. Okay. Uh, source control. This one is quite interesting to me. When you're working with themes, you have the source control integration inside Unreal. Uh, we have had kind of like the same UI for a long time. Uh, I'm quite curi curious how, how this one looks. Game feature plugin support for war partition. Just what I mentioned before, War Partition can also stream uh, game feature plugins depending on where you are in the map. Okay. Next, just virtual assets. Uh, basically, you will load what you need to be load in your game on demand. That's pretty cool. You don't need to load everything. And of course, it reduces a hard drive required for all team members and, you know, smaller things. That's, that's great. Uh, memory insights updates use more stuff for performance. That's quite good. Character animation, um, basically procedural control trick, animation retargeting for virtual production. Uh, not quite sure what, what is this since I'm more into games, uh, but looks like nerd. It didn't work quite properly for production, maybe. Character deformation improvements. This one looks quite good. 
uh, this kind of thing for when you have very special characters like monster or this kind of stuff you can really do some fancy stuff with this um, more debugging tools for for gameplay if you are programming uh, if you are programming your game then you might need those motion matching uh quite not sure what this is and post warping um okay anyway uh audio uh not an audio guy here um let me see if there's something quite important uh this one can be uh when we you use meta sounds and now you can check how the flow of your logic it, it's going on before we didn't have this and it, it's quite nice have like the like the waves of the music here it looks quite nice then you could go to platform or real editor natty support for on apple silicon mobile defer render improvements if you have worked in mobile before you know that the fair render for mobile can be quite expensive and usually you you can use forward rendering for this if you want to increase your frames like if you have a game like i don't know 30 frames per second and then uh, you, you put forward rendering like looks worse but you can easily get 120 fps so nice to see some updates on this um and then this thing uh vr vr workflows then geometry tools uh this one i've been looking forward for quite a long time uv editor um you can do some operations inside um unreal if you want to lay out some uvs and this kind of thing um, it's nice that you can actually move the uvs here uh, the less we need to go to another 3D modeling application to do this kind of stuff, the easier you can iterate to make changes on your models. Typically, that's the case when you model something, you want to make changes. Geometry scripting improvements, uh, that's really nice. You can bake textures, bake vertex. You can have quite a few updates here for procedurally generating uh, meshes. That's that's great, especially the bake texture. Like, um, basically, you could have a script where you just, you know, create a low poly just by one clicking. You import your asset from I don't know a scan data or whatever, and you just click on it, and you will create a low poly. It will bake the uh, the texture and vertex and everything, and you don't need to go to another three D modeling application. And the cool thing about this is because it's a script you can just apply to like 10 models or anything and you can just go have a coffee and come back and you have all your game ready models pipeline uh basically this is stuff for things i don't usually check if you are interested you can take a look at it like data smith this kind of stuff for production um you know me i'm more focused on games so uh, if you are interested uh, data smith has a quite a big updates since it began it began so you can just take a look at this chaos cloud improvements now this one is nice says with chaos physics you can create cloud simulation for a wide variety of dynamic effects property clothing etc and now you can add air pressure that's nice uh, it's nice to have cloud simulation inside the engine uh chaos character physics docs and tutorials oh nice uh, so now there there are some tutorials here for character physics using the chaos club okay that's nice uh cinematic and virtual production not really my thing but you can you can take a look at it framework blueprint improvements uh blueprint namespaces blueprint header preview they're already quite robust so uh production ready smart objects uh not sure really what this is let's read it smart objects are entities positioning the world that encapsulate information on how to interact with them to trigger one of the game for for either the players or ai agents 
they will become production ready for 5.1. That's cool. More stuff for AI. Um, mass entity that's also for AI to have like a lot of calculations. Like we want to have a city with a lot of people interacting with each other and everything. Uh, this really helps. Uh, it's quite useful. Production ready state free. Also more stuff for for AI. Iris replication. Um, basically multiplayer, I guess. Uh, gameplay framework updates, enhance input, modular gameplay effects, and debugging capabilities have been improved in ability system. Uh, we're going more for a modular approach when creating games, having the gameplay uh, ability system, the different types of game modes, and you can reuse them in many other games. It's quite a big thing uh, for this game generation, so it's nice to see some updates on it. Editor and UI system. This, uh, you may want to check it out in the editor, but basically, reference viewer, quite important if you want to check the dependencies. If you, uh, if you are looking for, like, um, I don't know, this asset, what uh, texture is using and everything, you can have all the dependencies and what the materials and, and, you know, maybe you need to clean up something in the content browser. It's nice to see what assets. Uh, it's using so you don't delete them. Um, outliner quality of life improvements. Okay, so basically the outliner it's more organized. That's nice. Um, usually I don't use the outliner because of that, uh, but now I can take a look at it. It's just really a lot of objects. Like nobody wants to browse through at least two thousand things. On the browser, searching and filtering improvements. So now you can have the filter here on the left, uh, I guess. Before it was on the on the top. So yeah, that's nice. And content browser now allows you to view your last few searches for convenience. That's nice. That's that's great actually. Uh, new curve table editor, basically different um, editor for the curves. Python type hinting. I'm not really into programming that much, so uh, I don't know if it's, that's great or not. I hope it is. Uh, UMG extend widget using name slots. Okay. So basically, uh, you can reuse the, the templates uh, you can create here, apparently. Uh, view model, that I think that's, that's a new one. Okay. Localization, pipeline, automation, more things for localized content, change the, um, you know, the language and this kind of stuff. Light mixer panel, uh, so nice. Now you can have an overview of all your lights. I think that's better than having them on the outliner where you always try to find your lights. And if the name is doesn't have a light there, uh, you're gonna have a hard time Find them then. So that's great. You can just use this light mixer to browse through all your all your lights in the level. So quite a big update. Uh, I'm downloading this as I'm recording this video. It's more than 100 gigabytes. So so far the biggest update I've had so far. It's still on preview, but in my experience, it should be quite stable. Uh, if you're working in a project, you may not want to update just yet. But if you do, I highly encourage you to try the 5.1 because it comes with a lot of performance update, especially this big two, the Lumen and Nanite improvements. And also you can play with the Strata materials and the GPU light mass. So I hope you like this video. And I also hope that you don't know that 5.1. This is Mao, and I will see you in the next one.